What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome back to another Monster Hunter World Iceborne build video. And today, we are taking a look at Elemental Bow. Now, Elemental Bow has always been rather crazy in Monster Hunter, and it got even crazier in Iceborne. With the introduction of some new mechanics and changes to how Elemental works, it is stronger than ever before. Now, this is a water oriented build, obviously. Uh, but here is our full loadout. There's a lot going on here. Uh, and one big takeaway I want to mention here is this is intended for kind of the baseline of endgame at Master Rank. Like once you get up to the Elder Dragons and you really start farming and putting your sets together, that's where this build is going to shine. Once you get up into the MR70 area, when you have access to Silver Rathalos, switching this up for a four-piece Silver Wrath and then the Garuga legs will likely be much, much stronger. I have not had a chance to test this yet myself, but early reports are coming in that the true elemental crit on the Silver Wrath gear is absolutely bonkers for element builds. So something to keep in mind as you level and grind on now. Now, before I go into all the gear, the one thing I want to touch on is Thousand Dragons, the new move we have access to. Now, we all know about the Dragon Piercer. You know, you charge on up, you pull out those arrows, you aim it, you fire, and it rips on through the monster and does a bunch of damage. But there is a new king in town. Boom, boom. Thousand dragons, baby. This thing does fat, fat damage. As you can see, 700 there. Uh, and that's with Slinger ammo. Loaded without Slinger ammo. Just to give another comparison here, here is our Dragon Piercer. Which, I mean, this isn't a great target, so we only hit 380 on it. Showing Thousand Dragons. 548 without Slinger ammo in it. Uh, it's basically like a super powered uh, spread shot. And all you do is while you're aiming, just hit the right stick in. Hit triangle and circle just like you're doing a dragon piercer and you end up shooting out that monstrous monstrous damage really great for when you get the monster down and you're just destroying its face so anyway jumping on into the gear in particular for the water build we are running with the black panula now this is the namiel bow and i did try out both this and the fully upgraded version of the hunter's brave bow which goes up to 390 water although it's hidden and ultimately in testing, I found that I like the Black Panula a lot more. And there's a couple reasons for this. The first being that we do have access to power coding where we don't over here. And the second, the hidden element. Now you may say, why is hidden element a concern when we have element acceleration? But it's important to note that two piece element acceleration is the equivalent of only having two out of three release. So you do need to slot in a release jewel and use element acceleration to get your full three of three. And what I found while hunting is that until that element acceleration got up, you know, you're effectively doing only a third of the elemental damage you would be doing otherwise. Couple that in with the fact that you don't have access to power coding, and ultimately I found the Hunter's Brave Bow to be a bit disappointing compared to Namiel, which comes with some affinity already baked into it. Uh, it has, you know, respectable water. This caps on out at 430, and it has decent attack and some nice coatings on it. So the main takeaway I want you to make here is when it comes to testing an elemental bow if you have something that isn't hidden element and is still very high that'll likely be your ideal choice but if you do want to go for hidden element bows just keep in mind that you need to maintain that element acceleration if you're really going to see top damage working with the namiel gear now moving on from there we have access to a flood charm 4 we actually don't need to have this any higher because this bow caps out at 430 now there's some misinformation a lot of people have said that you know elemental caps were completely removed and it's not that they were completely removed they were just greatly increased so the best way to determine your elemental cap now essentially come on out here to the training dummy fight the training dummy for a little bit we'll see your elemental acceleration come up um, in particular, if I'm trying to determine a cap, I usually like to test with a four-piece Namiel, just because 150 is a huge increase to element. Once elemental acceleration is on, you can go on over to Decos, and then you can go over to whatever your element would be, in this case, Stream. Um, and I can, you know, add or remove Stream Jewels to increase my element, and once I see that it's orange, I know that I've met my cap. So in the case of this weapon, uh, being over at... Uh, 380 is great because the 60 puts me up to 430, which means there's only 10 element that ends up getting lost in the process, and it's a very nice threshold. So keep that in mind when you're deciding on an elemental weapon to use. Make sure to test what your cap is at uh, if you're running the Namiel gear, which I would suggest running with the bow because it does have some very nice innate skills. Um, so moving on from there, of course, you know, your elemental charm of choice. And then as for our crit element, in addition to to our element acceleration, I would suggest a Rhyme Guard Helm and Mail, and then Tentacle Greaves and Coil, 
with Kaiser Van Braces to round it on out due to the point of Wex, as well as the level four and level three deco slots. Now, the biggest difficulty with putting together a strong elemental bow build is the amount of decorations required. Uh, if you are a bow player, you already know this. This shouldn't be a surprise, but there are a lot of very rare decos that you're going to need. You're going to want four shot. You're going to want spread shots. You're going to want mighty bow. And those are your three, the, the holy trinity of a bow build, in my opinion. You need those three to really get things rolling. Now, you could drop out spread jewel and go for double spread shot or excuse me double four shot or vice versa you could go double spread and drop four shot but ultimately i find i tend to have a pretty even play style where i'm alternating between spread shots and normal shots so i like to have one of each it very much is going to be user preference though uh, mighty bow i'd pretty much consider to be like a required deco it, it is vastly vastly potent for bow builds cannot stress that enough um, aside from that, our gear gives us access to Stamina Surge 3, and we have one point of Constitution. You can actually mix this build up a little bit, going for the Tentacle Greaves Alpha to have another point of Constitution, uh, and that's really going to come down to preference. Personally, I find that I really like 3 Stam Surge over 3 Constitution, but it really depends on how you play a bow, and you know that's, that's a per-person playstyle type thing. Uh, besides that, we aim to get a ton of Critical Eye and Weakness Exploit with Crit Eye at 7 and Wex at 3. Uh, we'd have 100% affinity on weak spots, so that's really nice to have. And then since we have 2 Divine Blessing coming in from our Helm, I slotted in a Protection Jewel up in the top, giving us level 3, which is actually pretty nice with the bow, since you are kind of squishy to begin with. So that pulls everything together. You know, our Crit Eye up at 7, our Water Element at Cap with Namiel's up, Wex at 3, Stam at 3, Divine at 3, Normal Shots, Spread Shots, Fortify, Resuscitate, Constitution. Obviously, some of this stuff is coming in from the Fortitude Expert and the Christbert Expert Jewels, but, you know, that's going to be on a very much person-by-person -person basis. But I find myself a very big fan of Fortify, uh, especially in places like the Guided Lands. So all in all, that is the bow build, obviously. We are still saying peak with fashion being one of our number one concerns when we make these builds. I got to say, Iceborne really did a great job uh, on fashion. Between being able to work in how layered armor works now and just how some of the sets look in general, fashion is better than it's ever been before, in my opinion, in the world. So either way, let's take this thing out on a hunt and show you what it's capable of. So for our hunt, we're going after Sleepy Time Puffball. It's funny, we were talking uh, the other day on stream. The discussion came up of what monster... If you could have as a pet, obviously I'll bit a much smaller version of said monster, but what monster would you want? And uh, one of viewers replied that they would want Nightshade because not only is it like a little adorable puffball, but also they could have it just puff in their face when they got tired and put it put it to sleep like it's a its own personal Nightquill machine. Like I don't think you're supposed to inhale that. I mean, I may be wrong, but something tells me that uh, probably not good to inhale whatever he is spitting out. And poof! Nope. Oh, wow. So you cannot launch him. Either that or I wasn't on his head. Either way, I gotta get a weak point on you. Come here. Come here. Come here, you puff. There we go. love that, that you get the aerial shot. One of the water weak monsters that I actually really enjoy fighting with Bo, just because he can sit in the air all he wants. Fighting him, of course, is you gotta watch out for all these uh, sleep puddles or sleep clouds. I don't know why I'm calling them puddles. Puddles, they're definitely not puddles, they're not a liquid.
I love that you don't need to worry about charging that up. Whereas with like uh, your dragon piercer, you know, if you don't charge it up, you're gonna see a. If you don't charge up dragon piercer, you get a pretty big loss in damage. All the balls. Yeah. A face full of balls. Mantle. It was good while it lasted. That's gonna probably whiff, but. Oh! <laughs> oh! Sleepy time monster is looking a little sleepy himself. my favorite thing about that is like you know you always dragon piercer was always kind of jank when it came to bigger or uh, smaller monsters like this guy oh lord another paralyze You got me! No! Yammers! God, he's doing the crazy. Oh, is he? I thought he was going to do that thing where he puffs up and... Yep, there it is. It doesn't look threatening, but dude, I have had that thing almost one-shot me before. Give you a little hint of this. Oh, man, that was it. Dragon Slayer adding some damage. In. And we are at what? That is a 743, so not too shabby. Not the fastest kill for sure, especially given I got him with both the Boulder and the Dragon Slayer, but pretty respectable. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up the bow build. Um, you know, I was never too big on bow, but I will say the the addition of Thousand Dragons has me really liking it, because, I mean, that was one of the things I always disliked about the bow, is anytime you were fighting something that was small, your Dragon Piercer was basically useless. Um, and Thousand Dragons 
pretty much negates out that that downside, you know. We're able to to dump fat damage into the face of the monster now quite easily. So anyway, thanks for coming on by and checking it out. Uh, I have the Insect Glaive build ready to go. Just got to find time to record it. And as for Great Sword and Gun Lance, those will come up after I get some farming on Brute Tigrets done. So make sure to stay tuned, and I'll catch you guys soon enough with more.